Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Oliver. Welcome back, Oliver. It is fantastic to be back. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you back. So I just was looking and it's been since August of 22 that you were Damn. on. I can't even believe that. And you were Damn. on and I, oh, you were just so well-spoken. I was like, he's like the dream guest. I just need to have him on all the time. But, um, <laughs> and we talked about, I wrote it down, building dream relationships. Mm -hmm. And, and you've done a lot since then, but even prior uh, to, we were just talking before I hit record about being on the entrepreneurship journey. Yeah, it's man, it has been, and that's, that's a very, that's a very good word to describe it, a journey, right? So I told somebody, I was talking about a journey. So I live in Maryland for, for mm -hmm. the listeners who could give some context. I live in Maryland. So I said, if I were to jump in the car and drive from Maryland to California, there's absolutely no way that I can predict what will take place in those 36 hours that I would be in the car. Yeah. And that is the entrepreneurial journey for me, right? So I, so true story, when, before I got married, the year before I got married, I was driving from Maryland to Michigan. So my wife at the time was in Michigan. I lived in Michigan for several years and I was back home in Maryland and headed back to her. I get, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a whole nother story in itself. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm headed back to her. I am about three and a half hours, maybe into my journey. My car catches on fire. Oh my gosh. True story. Car catches on fire. And I would have never been able to predict that when I left my <laughs> parents' home in Maryland. Like I would never have been able to you predict that. You probably wouldn't have and, left. <laughs> and I probably would not uh, there. And that's exactly where I was getting to. The entrepreneurial journey is just the same, right? It, there are so many things that I'm learning on this journey. So many things that I've been exposed to and that I'm experiencing. And we talked about this before we started recording that are growing me in ways that aren't necessarily business related. Like my faith is growing. My ability to manage is growing. The way I handle disappointment is growing because everything don't happen <laughs> the way you want it to happen in this entrepreneurial journey. Right. So there's so many things that I'm learning about myself that's growing my character. Uh, and it's been, it's been a good ride and it's been since we last, uh, were on the podcast together, some things have happened that I absolutely am over the moon about. Some things have happened that I wish did not happen. Yeah. And that's part of the process. Well, okay. So that makes me wonder because nobody puts like the bad stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Nobody mm -hmm. does. It's like, oh, right. I went from zero to 100 and it was easy as pie and nothing bad happened. So exactly. do you think that it seems hard because of the expectations that you had based on what you were seeing happen on Instagram or, you know, people that you're friends with that you saw get really successful that you never heard the bad? So you just didn't anticipate it. Do you think that's why it's been? I think I think that contributed to it. I won't say that was it it holistically, but I think that contributed to it because, and I said this to you before too, that like this entrepreneurial journey, this life is not as sexy as people portray it to be. Yeah. Because just what you said, all you see is, Hey, I did this and blew up. Okay, cool. So I'm going to do this and wah, wah. <laughs> like, wait a minute. That's, that's not what's supposed to happen. <laughs> like, you know, wait, not, what? <laughs> yeah, that's not supposed to happen. And yeah. and what's interesting is when I, I was doing this, the coaching and, and, and speaking, not as much speaking as I'm doing now, but I was still doing coaching and speaking while I was still in the corporate space. And I had a, a semblance of a plan when I jumped out of the corporate space and only a lot, only a few people know that. Well, maybe a lot of people know if they follow me, but it did not work. Mm. Didn't work. And I did everything that I thought was supposed to be done and everything that people said you should do in order to ensure that it works. And it didn't. So some of it, some of it, I believe is just my, lack of exposure to the the real truth 
about it all. And then for me, I think some of it was just, just not knowing because right. there, there's, there's, you, you recognize when you embark on something, at, at least I, I will, I'll speak for myself. I recognize often when I embark on a journey of any kind that I don't know as much as I thought I knew. Mm -hmm. And that often can, if not managed correctly, can actually send you into a tailspin because if you start second guessing the choice you made and you start second guessing whether you heard what you heard when they, <laughs> when you right. heard that voice say, Hey, go forth and be great. Did, Hey, was that me? Or what, did I have indigestion? Or was that, <laughs> you know, what was that? <laughs> right. You know, and, have and you I think used for me, that a lot? Like when you've stood up and given your talks, have you I, spoken about your journey and how difficult? Because yeah, that's such a huge bit of information for everyone. Not yeah. even if you're not trying to pursue some big business, just in life. Just in life. You're gonna yeah. you're gonna hit walls all the time. And and it's and it's not so much to I was I was talking to a, a group of entrepreneurs. It's not so much to discourage you or to uh, to to get you depressed about your situation, but it's to give you the realistic side of what a journey entails. And if you and if you approach it in a way that allows you to enjoy the journey as opposed to uh, using the destination as just this benchmark that you consistently evaluate your day to day by, you'll right. always fall short. Yeah. And you'll always be frustrated and you'll always be like, oh, well, this is not what I signed up for. But if every day is a journey and every day you're doing 1% more than you did the day before and you're learning and you're growing and you're experiencing things good and bad and you're learning how to navigate them at some point, And this is, you know, people kind of make fun of me now. They call me the analogy guy, but I, I'm going to keep using them because they work. At some point, if you walk outside of your house right now and you start putting one foot in front of the other, and you walk for an hour doing that, you will not be in Canada. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Right. It's not going to happen. Right. However, however, you're going to look back and be like, oh, I'm kind of far from my house. I didn't realize that because the whole time I've been listening to music and I've been people watching and I was running from the dog that was chasing me. And everything, you know what I'm saying? Good and yeah. bad was happening. Yeah. And wait a minute, I'm I'm kind of far. That's what that's our perspective. That's what our perspective should be about how we look at that journey. Looking how far we've come, just yeah. looking back at instead of always, where am I gonna be in a year? Where am I gonna be mm -hmm. in six months? Where am I gonna be in 10 years? Look how far I've come yeah. in a year's time, in 10 years' time. Yeah. Look where I'm at, look what I've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, let me say this for those who are listening. Here's what I'm not saying. Because I got to be balanced. What I'm not saying is to wing it. Have a plan. You should have a plan. But at the same time, do not allow that plan to keep you from enjoying the steps that it's going to take for you to accomplish that plan. Yeah, I think people get discouraged, though, when they make plans and the plans feel like they continually fall right. to pieces. Right. Then it's like, oh, why even make a plan? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's it's important to have one. But I think that's where people get flipped up is yeah. when they and that can discouraged. be discouraging. Mm -hmm. That can be discouraging because the life of an entrepreneur will definitely teach you that things do not work. Yeah. Just as much as things do work. Right. And so, but listen, I am, I'm having a good time all in all, I'm having That's a good great. time and I've had, I've had the highs and the lows. Right. So just to give you a real world example, just for people who are like, well, it sounds good what he's saying, but has he really lived that or is he just being inspirational? I have been in the place where I have a speaking engagement every week for a month. Right. Mm -hmm. And I have some coaching clients. I've been on that end of the spectrum. I also been on the end of the spectrum where I just put my all into pushing and marketing and 
advertising and nobody's sure. Mm. I mean, like, not not like one person and we expected 10. I'm saying zero. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so oh. I've been on both ends of the spectrum. So and, and it teaches you something because you anybody who says they're not disappointed and it doesn't make them question is not telling the truth. Right. So I remember moments sitting at this desk where I'm like, OK, uh, maybe I got it wrong. Yeah. Well, that's a good segue into <laughs> why you're here. I I saw you post something on Facebook about mm -hmm. talking about your real feelings, men, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and how getting together with friends and stuff. And you posted it and I read it and I was like, God, I have to have him back on to talk about this because it's so true. Why do, sorry, but why do men <laughs> not not talk about that stuff. Why do they keep, uh, not all the time. Why do men sometimes mm -hmm. keep things mm -hmm. so surface level? Like when you say, how are you doing? You, you just went to a thing and you were going to stand up and talk to a bunch of people and there were zero people there. And then you mm -hmm. went and met with your friends and you're like, Oh, Hey, things are great. Yep. When you know, deep down, they're not. So why, why do guys do that? I think many of us are taught that we have to appear a certain way so we've been given <clears throat> just to give some context we've been given this role that comes with a good amount of responsibility and you don't want to drop the ball per se on that responsibility part of that responsibility is also how we look so i don't want to appear weak to you because if I appear weak to you, you will use that as an indicator when you go to evaluate who I am as a person and my capacity to be able to fulfill my responsibility. And I don't want that. And so as such, I am going to appear strong for whatever scenario and group of people that I need to appear strong for. And <clears throat> we've done that for years and it was passed down to us. That's the, that's, excuse me. That's one of the premises behind why I even wrote the book that I wrote called overcoming the man laws, right? Because mm -hmm. that's a man law quote unquote that we've been given, like never let them see you sweat. Don't you, you know, don't people will take your mistake, your kindness for weakness. You've got to stay strong in every scenario. And all of these are fantastic quality traits. Let's be clear about that. However, what we're not taught is that there, that allowed, there can be allowed some balance. And that balance may look like me saying, hey, you know what, Dawn, I can't even really do that right now. And that being okay. Or you know what, hey, you know what, I tried that, Dawn, I know I was supposed to do this for you, and it, it and I, listen, I blew it. My bad. We're not taught that we can do that. And so many of us, myself included. And then you watch people play it out. So I'm going to use myself as an example. Mm -hmm. My father, it, it, the only, it's, it's interesting. My sister and I were having a conversation. My father is 88 and he's slowing down. Mm -hmm. Right. My sister and I have a conversation. We would have never been able to imagine this man walking slow. Cause he did everything. Yeah. And he it's was hard. good at it all. Mm -hmm. And we never saw him sweat. I don't think I ever saw him cry. Like, I mean, it just, he's like Superman. <laughs> I never saw him do any of that. Right. So yeah. now, now I come into manhood as a husband and father and I'm like, well, why am I feeling like this? I'm that's no, <laughs> get yourself together. Like <laughs> you'll be banging your chest. Like, you know, and, and, and you just, I don't know. You just, after a while you learn, you just can't, it's very difficult. I won't say you can't, it's very difficult to maintain that. Long -term. Do you have friends that you go deep with or are I, most of your friends the, the yeah, Hey buddy. That's, that's a very, I, I, I love these questions because you get me to be transparent. I have very few. Like when I say very few, like I could count on one hand and have fingers left over. 
So I know you're married and you and your wife, you have, you know, you get out there together and talk about relationships and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you divulge to her when you are feeling super insecure or do you feel like you don't want to worry her? So you don't. So I do now more than, than ever, as we've grown in our relationship, I've grown as a person. And so that has allowed me to be a lot more vulnerable. And I mean, heck, we talk about communication to folks. So I got to at least practice what I preach. Right. right. <laughs> so yeah, it had, but, but I will say, even in that, there are times where I'm like, you know what? Before I go to her, let me just fight this out and see what happens. And and that's just that's the lingering part of that, right? Because I, I I'm I'm always going to be a work in progress. I'll never admit to anybody because I would be not telling the truth that I've mastered any of it, right? I've gotten better at it. I've grown, but there's always that little twinge of like, man, I'm. I'm, this is my responsibility. I'm supposed to figure this out mm -hmm. and I'm supposed to figure it out favorably, you know? And so that's, that's, but I'm learning. And I think I told you this before too. I'm as the older I'm getting, the more I'm realizing that there are many things in life that I should not navigate alone. It's not necessarily that I can't navigate it alone, but I should not because there's some level of perspective that you get from uh, that level of conversation and vulnerability. There's some level of growth that you get. There's some level of release just for just for maintaining my mental stamina alone. One of the chapters in my book is about mental stamina, just for maintaining that alone and being able to balance the load, whatever balance means requires you if you think about a scale right you're trying to balance something balancing is just as much as putting something on to balance as it is taking something off mm -hmm. and sometimes that release of just me saying something even if it does not come to some level of resolution or some level of strategy is crafted as a result of that the release in and of itself can create the balance that i'm looking for and that's what i'm learning later on in life it took me a long time to get there but yeah it's it's interesting, though, how much you can learn about yourself as you're getting older, you know, and yeah. you look back and you're like, why did I sweat the small stuff? Why did yeah. all those things seem such a big deal? And you look back, it's like, who cares about any of mm -hmm. that? So yep. what do you do? What do you do to get rid of stress, decompress? What's your go to? Do you exercise? Do you get drunk? Um, I, don't, I don't know if I have a particular go to. I, I, um, there's a number of things like I, we're, we're, we're big family folks, right? So, you know, I have three grown kids. My son it will be 21 soon and have a four-year-old grandson. So, um, for example, uh, the, the day that we're recording this now, the, the night before there was a football game. And, um, at one point we were all watching the game and, as as little as that may seem it's it's moments like that where i'm at my my most at peace yeah isn't that awesome yeah. it's it seems yeah. like like you said as little as it might seem but it's like your heart feels like it weighs 50 pounds when yeah, you have everybody like, you love around yeah. you doing like something everything is good with the world right now so, right yeah. so yeah. what what is next for you what do you what do you have on your in mm. your future? What is next? That's a great question. So I'll tell you what I'd like to be next. Um, my wife and I want to write another book. Um, the Overcoming the Man Laws was was written by me, uh, but we want to do one together on relationships based on our story. Um, our story is an interesting one. It's not um, as fairy tale as some may seem. Mm -hmm. even, though, even though that's the space we're in, right? Didn't start right. out that way. So I'd love to do that. My wife is very uh, passionate about single moms. My okay. wife was a single mom when we met. And as such, has always had a heart for single moms. And so she just released a journal and planner for single moms. She's also working on a small book um, that's almost done. 
for single moms as well. So we, we got a few things that we're looking at in addition to the marital space. We're always going to be in the marital space. So speaking, coaching in that space, that's always going to happen. Um, I'm working with, with some, with more men these days. Uh, the book has kind of helped that. So I think what's next for me is just continue to build on what we're doing and really sharing our journey in hopes that it will inspire and encourage others. Cause here's what I'm learning. I'm learning that the more I come out about these things like that Facebook post that you uh, uh, alluded to, the more I come out about those kinds of things, the more feedback I get from people saying, yeah, you know what? We should be talking about that more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we do need to handle that better, you know? And, and that's, that is encouraging to me. I'm hoping that that, uh, that starts a shift so that we can talk more and that there are more spaces for men in particular to be able to um, navigate that. Cause it's tough. Let me tell you how, let me tell you how tough it is, Dawn. I'm, we let's, let's talk like nobody's listening for a second. I'm game. Let's do it. So, so here's, here's what's so interesting. I had a guy who I was coaching a couple and every once in a while with these couples, I have the opportunity to take the man aside and do a single session with them or a series of sessions with them alone. And a guy told me one day, once I got him alone, he was like, man, I don't even know what to do. And to give you context in some of the sessions, <clears throat> he would not say anything. And and the wife would rah, 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 rah. He, he would not say anything. Or there would be times where he would start to say something and he would either see a facial reaction or a body reaction. And he would just be like mid sentence would just stop talking. Mm. So finally, when we got together, I was like, bro, what, what, what's going on with that? Like, what, what's up with that? And he was like, man, I don't know what to do. It's like, if, if I'm too vulnerable, then I'm a punk and I don't get no respect. If I'm not vulnerable enough, then I'm a jerk and I don't want to open up. There's no in between. Mm. And for a lot of guys, that's the world they live in, right? The, the women in their lives expect them to be manly. And I'm doing that in air quotes for those who don't see the video. <laughs> we don't know. But what is that? We don't know what that is. However, we know when we aren't because then the women in our lives are like, you soft. That's yeah. tough to navigate. Right. Right. What do you, you know, do? It's a tough space to navigate. And so, um, Hopefully there are more spaces um, that help us do that. Because in the post that you're talking about, the Facebook post, I said so many of us men feel pressured to, for some reason or another, feel like we have to consistently show everyone our good side. While large parts of our lives, whether it be marriage, finances, mental health, business, spiritual life, et cetera, are just blurry. So to give context for those who don't know what I'm talking about, the I post a picture of myself uh, from a photo shoot that I did, and the background of the photo is blurry. And so I just use that to illustrate. And, and it so happens that the side of me you see is, and I think you might be the first person that I'm saying that I'm sharing this with. Mm. The side of the photo that you see is the side where I always feel like my beard comes out the best. Okay. So it was taken that way on purpose because typically when I shake my beard up, that side of my face seems to always come out better than the other side. <laughs> I notice it. Nobody else seems to notice it. My right. wife is like, I don't know what you're talking about. Your beard <laughs> looks fantastic. I don't know what you're talking about, but I notice it. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, take the picture. I'm going to sit here on this bench Go over there and take the picture so you get my good sign, right? And so that's the context of where that's coming from. But we do that in life. Mm -hmm. Like, we do that in life. And yeah. it's, it's, it's not sustainable long term. No, and that is totally why I am giving up social media besides my ah. podcast. 
I cannot, I like, I love these kinds of talks. Mm -hmm. I love like put away the superficial garbage. Yeah. I would rather yeah. see a couple post their, one of their biggest fights <laughs> yeah. just so that yeah. people can be like, okay, it's not just me. It's, it's they mm -hmm. they fight too, you know? Yep. And I feel like the, everything is just a facade facade. It's like, come on, let's just all be real. I'm yeah, sick of the fake. Yeah, it's 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 a rough. It's a very wonderful but very interesting and maybe even rough time of life that we're living in because social media and and I I spend a, a significant amount of time on social media for what we do for mm -hmm. my business and I also I also create content for other companies. Mm -hmm. So ironically. I, at this moment, am also on a social media pause as well, except for the content that I'm creating for other companies. But in terms of me just being on there and putting stuff out for us, and we're like, you know what? Let's step back. We need to gain some clarity on some things. Mm -hmm. Even the social media space is changing. And I dare say, not to sound controversial or like a conspiracy theorist, but I dare say that that is feeding into our inability to navigate these kinds of topics the way we should. I believe because, that. Because now it's, it, it's, it's, it's almost a damned if you do damned if you don't situation on social media, because everybody's putting out their good side on social media, but then you have folk who are like, that's fake. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to do anything with social media. Then when the folk who hear it's fake, start putting out what you said, like, Hey, we had our biggest fight. Then they're like, Oh, we, you shouldn't be putting out your business on social media. <laughs> So what do you want? <laughs> like, what, what do you right, want? Then? <laughs> right. Well, you're never going to you know, please everybody. Never yeah. So and, please and, then, everybody. And, and that and that lends itself to our inability to navigate a, in a way that causes us to find balance with our mental load. So now you have these folk who are stressed out over social media. Mm -hmm. And in and in some people's minds, you'd be like, "What? That's ludicrous." Yeah, you might think so, but once we start to ingest information the way we do and ingest information at such an alarming rate compared to the trickle of information that we feel like we can let back out at some point you you just you know you put too much air in a balloon it's going to burst right? right one of two things happen either the either the balloon is going to burst or you're going to lose control of the balloon and it's going to pop fly out your hand and it's going to now be hitting <laughs> everything around you and tearing up everything around you Either way is bad. So yeah, we got, we got to do better. So <laughs> when you have these um, relationship, I, what do you call them? Seminars? I'm sorry. I don't know what you call. Okay. Yeah. So um, we do, we do seminars. We do group coaching experiences and one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. Is the divorce rate still in a real bad state? Are people seeking those kind of seminars more often and therapy and stuff more, do you think now than ever? Or I just really don't know where it sits. I, I was I, divorced, but mm -hmm. I, and you know, they used, it used to be like half the 50%, you know, I just didn't know what the, where are we at with that? It, it, it fluctuates. So it is, it is still right around the 50% mark. Um, it, it fluctuates. So some years it's a little less, um, some years it's a little more, so it kind of balances out. Um, I don't know if people are seeking it more or if I'm just exposed to it more because well, that's, that's the industry fair. I'm in. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to say necessarily people are seeking it more, but I will say this coming out of the pandemic, people were seeking something, even if they didn't know what it was, they were just mm -hmm. like, Hey, listen, we're on the other side of this. I just ended up spending the last 13 months in this house with this person who I yeah. thought I knew and I don't know them <laughs> and something got to happen. I don't know what, but yes. you, know, you tell me, <laughs> you know? And so, we, so, so there, was a, there was a lot of that that came out of the pandemic and, and I was transparent. Like my wife and I, we do a seminar on intimacy building holistically, not just in the bedroom, but holistically. Right. And we were honest that seminar was built out of an experience we had in 2020 after being married 20 years, but now being in this same space every day, we realized that we weren't as intentional as we thought we were 
in some of those areas. And that's literally how that that seminar was birthed. It wasn't that we had some, you know, great idea and epiphany and like, oh, let's do let's help people build. No, no, no. We learned that we weren't being intentional. Right. And we decided to figure out how we can remedy that. And and that remedy became a seminar. I love that. That's the realness. That's what I'm talking about. Just and not only did you use it to your benefit, but now you can help benefit others by mm-hmm. saying, "Here, this is what happened, and yeah. we want to pass this on and help you." I think it's mm-hmm. great. So tell people how they can find you. So if you are, you know, ironically, I'm taking a social media pause, but if you are a social media person, <laughs> we still have a presence there. So <laughs> if you're a social media person, the handle is Denali D E N. O-L-I, that is the first three letters of my wife's name, Denise, first three letters of Oliver, D-E-N-O-L-I-L-L-C is the handle, social media handle everywhere. Um, D-E-N-O-L-I, Denali.org is the website, so you can reach us there as well, or email us, and you can either email Oliver at Denali, Denise at Denali.org, or admin at Denali.org. Awesome. I'm so happy you came back. We kind of covered a ton of stuff. Like the title for this is going to be <laughs> Word yeah, yeah. Vomit. <laughs> Word Vomit with Oliver. <laughs> yeah, the title is just going to be Catch Up. <laughs> catch up. <laughs> there you go. I love Reunited. it. Reunited. <laughs> <laughs> and it feels so good. No, this is great. I loved it. And I'll put everything in the show notes so everybody knows how to find you. But thank you so much. I'm not saying this is the last time I might want to have you and your wife back. Like I think relationship talk would be great. Mm -hmm. And I've never had two people on with Mm -hmm. me before. So I thought that'd be kind of fun. Let's Um, do it. Yeah. Touch base with her, see what she thinks, but thank you so much, so much for coming back and uh, I'll put everything in the show notes and I'll be in touch soon. Sounds good. It's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.